Promise to listen carefully and answer a question at the end. Yes, we promise. Many years had passed since the people had escaped from Egypt. The people of Israel lived as a nation. In time, Israel began to worship idols again. So God gave them enemies. These enemies were the Philistines. The people of Israel then worshipped an idol. Called Dagon. This god had a fish's head on a man's body. The Philistines took charge of all the arms that the Israelites had. This made them unable to fight any longer. They also robbed Israel of their crops, which made them starve. They prayed to God and cried for help. God heard their prayers. And came to their rescue. Among the tribe of Dan lived a man named Manoah. One night, an angel came to Manoah's wife and said, "You will give birth to a son, and your son will grow up and save Israel from the Philistines. However, there is only one condition." Your son must never drink any wine. That his hair must grow long, and will be a Nazarite priest. Soon after, Manoah's wife gave birth to a son, and she named him Samson. He became the strongest man on earth. He was so strong that he did not need an army. All the things he did to set his people free and save them from the Philistines, he did alone. One day, Samson fell in love with a Philistine woman and wanted to marry her. Samson went to his father and told him so. This made both his parents extremely unhappy, but they did not know that God. Was using this marriage to rescue the people of Israel from the Philistines. Did Samson have a girlfriend called Delilah? I know he had one. That is a story for another day. We are ready to listen to another story from the Bible, and we promise to listen carefully. All right then. A woman had prayed to the Lord for a son, and had promised. That if she did have one, she would offer him for service to God. Her son's name was Samuel, a wise man. During this time, the Israelites had an enemy called the Philistines. The Philistines wanted to fight the Israelites and take over the Promised Land. The Israelites decided to choose a king who could lead them into battle. So they went to Samuel to ask him for his help. They told him, "You must find us someone fit to be a king." Samuel asked God for advice. God said to Samuel, "They have rejected me, Samuel. Not you. Do as they ask. Find them a king to lead them into battle. But explain to them what it means to have a king before you do anything else." Samuel went to the elders and said to them. I am ready to find you a king, but first you must understand what it will mean to have a king. He will take over your sons for the army and ask for taxes. He will also take one tenth of your best produce. He will do what is best for you, but you will be under his rules and have to obey him. But the elders really wanted to have a king, so Samuel chose a handsome man called Saul. 
In the beginning, Saul proved to be a good king. He raised a strong army and fought the Philistines. But soon, he became very proud. He broke many religious laws and stopped listening to Samuel. Samuel said to Saul one day, Saul, since you have rejected God, God has rejected you as king. Samuel never saw Saul again after that day. He decided to look for a new king for the Israelites. Okay, Tubby, who did Samuel choose as the king? I know! Samuel chose Saul as the king for the Israelites. That is very good, Tubby. I've thought of a wonderful story to tell you. I'm sure you're all going to find it very interesting. Really? Then let's not waste any more time. Please start your story, Holy. Of course. But you know that after the story, I am going to ask all of you one question. Yes, we know, we know. A long time ago, the Philistines, who were the people of Israel's greatest enemy, wanted to make the people of Israel their slaves. Saul was then the king of Israel. Saul and the Israelite army, all of them gathered to fight the Philistines. The Philistine army was standing on top of a hill and the Israelites on the opposite hill. In between these hills was a valley. In the Philistine army, there was a man called Goliath who was a scary, strong giant. He was almost eight feet tall and wore heavy bronze armor and a bronze helmet. Goliath came out from their camp to challenge the Israelites. He had a bronze javelin and a spear which was very thick and had sharp iron points. Goliath came in front of Saul and said, Choose one of your men to fight with me. If he wins, we will be your slaves. If I win, you will become our slaves. These words of Goliath really frightened King Saul and the people of Israel since they did not have anyone who could fight him. Whoa! Goliath sounds so dangerous! He must have been a zillion times bigger than me! My goodness! Yes, that he was! To watch more videos, please subscribe. A long time ago, when Goliath, a giant bully in the Philistine army, challenged the Israelites to fight him, Saul and his people were extremely afraid. A young boy, David's three older brothers, were soldiers in the Israelite army. One day, David went to meet his brothers in the army. He arrived at the camp just when Goliath had come forward and challenged the Israelites once again. The people saw Goliath and ran away in terror. This only made Goliath laugh. David spoke to some of the men in the army and understood what was going on. He told them that he had a way to fight the giant. Some men from the army went and told King Saul about David so he sent for him. When David came to the king, he said, Your Majesty, no one should be afraid of this Philistine. I will go and fight him. This confused Saul greatly. David was just a boy and Goliath a giant. It was impossible for him to fight Goliath. But he saw the courage in his eyes and allowed him to go ahead. Saul gave him all the weapons and armor that were necessary to fight Goliath, but David knew he could not fight with these. He was not used to it. So he took it all off and picked up his shepherd's stick instead. He chose five smooth stones from the stream and put them in his bag. With his sling in hand, he went out to fight Goliath. Wow! David is so courageous and brave! I am so in love with him. <laughs> Freckles, you are such a pretty little girl. If David had seen you, I am sure he would have fallen in love with you too. Long time ago, a brave young man called David 
had defeated a Philistine giant called Goliath single-handedly. After this battle, when he returned to camp, Abner, who was King Saul's commander, took him to Saul. Seeing David, he was extremely pleased. Saul asked him, Young man, whose son are you? David answered, I am the son of Jesse from Bethlehem. Now King Saul's son was Jonathan. David's courage and bravery that day affected Jonathan very deeply. He was moved to love him like a brother. They had many things in common. From that day forward, they became best friends and never let anything or anyone come between them ever. As a gift of friendship, Jonathan gave David the beautiful robe he was wearing. Along with the robe, he also gave him his armor, sword and his bow. From that day onwards, Saul kept David with him and did not let him go back to Bethlehem. David won all the battles to which Saul sent him and he soon was made an officer in his army. This made Saul, his officers and his men very happy. Wow! Thank you, Holy, for sharing with us such a wonderful story about friendship. Well, well, you are most welcome, children. Now listen carefully. Today I will tell you the story of David the king. David was Jesse the farmer's youngest son and God's chosen king of Israel after King Saul. King Saul was very fond of David in the beginning. Later, however, because of David's growing popularity, Saul became very jealous of him. The Israelites, in the meantime, had to fight another war with the Philistines in which the Israelites lost. Saul lost his three sons. Soon Saul died of sadness. After Saul had died, there was no danger for David. So he decided to come back to his own land. His own tribe of Judah made him the king, just as Samuel had said when David was a little boy. As time passed, the rest of Saul's sons also died. Hence David was made the king of entire Israel. When the Philistines heard this, they decided to attack. But David proved to be a strong and clever king. He soon defeated the Philistines and drove them away. Never again did they dare to attack the city of God. David needed a capital city. He decided to take Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a beautiful city set on top of a hill. Jerusalem was strongly guarded and was a fortress. The Jebusites living there did everything they could to stop David from entering their city. But soon David found underground tunnels leading to the city. So he sent his soldiers inside the city to open the gates. And so David took Jerusalem by surprise, thus making it his capital city. I hope you listened carefully. The question is, which city did David want as his capital? Oh, this one is easy peasy. David wanted Jerusalem as his capital city. Very good, Freckles. That is absolutely right. Now off you go. The Holy Tales To watch more videos, please subscribe. Plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the Lord.